I mean, I, I, I don't approach teaching with the assumption that, that students are just going to sit there and listen to me and are going to do all the reading just because I ask them to, that they're going to read everything that I put in the subject handbook, that they're going to uh, diligently write notes while I talk for 50 minutes uh, in, a, in a lecture. I try to think about if I was in their position, what would I do? What would I respond uh, best to? Um, and I, I sort of, I suppose I break up those the different aspects of teaching. Um, when I lecture, I want it to be interactive. I want to invite questions. I want to give them time to ponder things that I say. Talk about this in, you know, in, in, in pairs before we come back. Um, use clickers to do some interactive lectures, uh, if need be. Um, use popular culture, uh, and contemporary popular culture to make points about the past. Maybe to show that human beings aren't sometimes so different as, as the people in the past, uh, as well as their, as well as their differences as well. Um, when it comes to tutorials, we, we teach big classes these days. I, I, as a student, I was in classes of 10 or 12. We're now teaching uh, 20 to 22, 25. So nearly every lesson, I, I'm breaking my students up into small groups, uh, giving them the power to facilitate their own discussions and sometimes to discuss the questions that they find most pressing out of the readings rather than the ones that I find most pressing. And I'll sort of flitter between groups and listen in and, and, and prompt maybe make a provocative statement, but try not to talk too much. Tutorials shouldn't be another lecture uh, from me. Uh, and equally, I set up my courses and I tell my students that they are responsible for each other's learning. Uh, and attendance is important because they're letting everyone else down if they don't turn up because they're, they're going to you know, miss out on that opportunity. Um, because of that, I don't, I don't assess tutorial uh, participation uh, as such. And often, I know... A lot of people have a 10% participation mark or a 20% participation mark or communication mark. Uh, because I do small group work, uh, I can't be listening in to make sure everybody is saying something or who says the most intelligent things. So I'm, I'm not going to pretend I can suddenly grade that. Uh, and I've always believed that um, you know, communication is a two-way street. You have someone talking and someone listens. Listening is really important. I can't tell whether people are listening. Sometimes, but if everyone's talking because they're trying to get their ten percent grades, and no one's listening, the commun communication isn't happening. Uh, and yeah, it's interesting. I think I'm the only person in my school that doesn't have a tutorial attendance and participation mark. Uh, but I just can't see any pedagogical use in having it, uh, and particularly the way when we teach large numbers of students. And the, and 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 then the onus is on me to create activities that students want to come. You know, if, if there's no stick there saying that you've got 20 marks on this, uh, if you don't come, you're, you're going to be punished. I have to make sure that what I'm doing in, in class is going to engage them, that they want to turn up, and that they don't know what's going to happen next week. Uh, so they'll come along and find out. So I do a lot of role play activities. I borrow, uh, you know, there's that, uh, that poster, you know, everything I learned about life I learned from kindergarten. <laughs> Well, I think everything we, we can learn about teaching, we can learn from kindergarten teachers. Sometimes the, the techniques that they use can be incredibly effective with, uh, you know, high, in, in higher education. If you sell it well, uh, role play is sometimes difficult to sell. Students sort of roll their eyes. But then within with five minutes, if you're enthusiastic about it, if you join in, if you're prepared to look a bit silly, uh, students will, will follow you uh, in that endeavour. So, yeah, I, so I try to mix, I try to mix things up. Uh, I try to give students focus questions to think about before they come to the shoots, and so they've got some things to think about during the readings. But if once we get into the room, they decide that they weren't so interesting after all, and they had some other things they wanted to talk about, I'm happy for them to be led uh, in, in those directions.